Um, welcome everyone. I'm Cara. I'm with the Hypothesis team, and I have the pleasure of introducing you to Nita Gopal. Mm -hmm. She is an Eng professor of English at Modesto Junior College, and she has such a timely session for you today. We know students um, have a lot of distractions nowadays going on, and she's just going to share some ways she's been able to combat them along with the help of social annotation. We really do want this to be an interactive session. We want you to share your thoughts, share your ideas. Uh, you have the capability if you want to raise your hand and share insights that you might be experiencing or strategies you, you've used. We can actually unmute you and you can you know, join the session and share those. Uh, you can also utilize the chat. And if you have any questions specific for Nita, the Q&A is right there. Um, so yeah, welcome, and I will pass it over to Nita. Thank you so much, Kara. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to present this. Um, I hope it's going to be helpful to you. So, okay, so how do we lessen distractions <laughs> with social media? Is that even possible? So, all right, so what we're gonna, let me just take a second here to move a few things around. That's okay. There we go. So um, leveraging the tendency for self-image, moving attention from self-image to the intellect. So it's just kind of my own observation, like whatever we try to do in social media, we want to create a nice image of ourselves, which is kind of like a fact, right? So for example, recently when I was trying to um, create a profile for, for a, um, a Zoom, um, I was like looking for photos and like, oh, is that photo good? Um, I thought it's not so good. Let me get to the nicer one. Let me, so it's like even me, not just students who are constantly on Instagram or uh, whichever uh, that they love, um, TikTok or what have you. It's, it's not just them, it's me, it's, it's, it's a natural thing that we want to project a nice image. So, the, so my, my question to myself was, because we have that tendency and now the tendency is deep rooted, now that social media has been around for a few years, it's now deep rooted now, right? So now can we use that? Can I use that to help my students turn that same, same feeling that they have the same tendency for, for to create an image, can they kind of turn that around a little bit and turn that toward their own selves? Can we try that? So that's what I've been trying for um, uh, a few months now. So um, uh, one of the ways that, that I think that might um, actually help is, is, um, is the way we set the prompt or the way we set the whole hypothesis or whichever social um, annotation tool that you use, if we can set the prompt in a certain way. So for example, if we can specify, what are we seeking with this annotation, annotation, assignment, exercise, activity? What is it that we are seeking? Can you, um, um, in reality, you might feel like, oh, okay, you're annotating a text and you're commenting on what this author said and you're commenting on what your friend is saying and what your uh, classmates are saying. Yes, it looks like that superficially. Essentially, what you're trying to do is understand that text. And how do you understand the text? You understand the text through your own intelligence, through your own thoughts, through your own impressions, through your own tendencies. That's how we understand the text. So essentially, it's really about understanding the self as much as it is about the outside part, which is understanding the text itself. The other thing that we are seeking is that we are seeking for uh, just the way we want others to empathize with us and respect us. We also want to do the same thing, empathize and respect various perspectives, you know, on this particular annotation um, um, uh, project or something. So the idea is to be completely aware. So can let's start from there because when you're doing this exercise, it's important to be aware and about what you're thinking, what you're saying, um, and, and of course the implications, the effects of all of that. So let's begin with awareness there. Let's, let's bring it to ourselves because that's where it's happening, number one. Then next thing, um, uh, what I also have them do is, uh, 
let's see if we can put some emphasis on creating anecdotes and storytelling when you're annotating because um, a well-constructed narrative can be very, very compelling. And because I'm an English teacher, we use, not that I, I teach story writing, uh, but we use that technique in even in regular compositions. So um, one of the things that I try to share with them is see if you can create an anecdote, see if you can create a story, bring a connection from here, from there, and then, and then insert that in, put that in, of course, with a connection, with a connection to uh, the lesson. So, and, and then I need to, of course, show how I do that. So students have a lot of fun when, especially if this is a hybrid class, and then I demonstrate to them, how, how do you actually do this, right? So to bring in your own, um, uh, you know, and, and if I happen to narrate some funny incidents in, in life, they are like listening. If I bring in a tragic incident from my life, completely see. So then, then I kind of am able to tell them, see how, see where your attention was. If your attention was on that for a second, you were focused. Let's see if we can do that not only with our own selves when we hypothesize um, or, or make the annotation, but also with others. Create that in such a way that others are also hooked. So you're not only uh, not only creating a focus for yourself, but you're helping others create a focus too. So this is one technique that I've been using, trying. The other thing that I've also been doing is trying to emphasize not just individual posts. Yes, your individual annotation, individual. Yes, oh, very good. But let us see for a second if we can emphasize the, uh, uh, the dialogue that's that's going to happen or that should happen or that is happening on this page. Can we do that? For example, we, and what we can also do is we can, uh, what I do is I have them do that and then I bring that in to Canvas and, and set up another assignment in conjunction with that. So what happens is um, a reflective discussion follows that dialogue. First, we give them directions to have that dialogue. And then, of course, there is a little bit of reflection exercise on what was that dialogue? How did that go? Some questions that I use that I ask is, which annotation dialogue among your peers did you find most engaging and enlightening? So the emphasis is on two, the dialogue. Place the dialogue on this discussion board and write a one paragraph commentary on what was said and how it was said. Explain why you chose this dialogue among many others. Would you vote for this dialogue as a model discourse? That's kind of uh, uh, the other exercise that we do. Okay, so now um, leveraging um, the, the whole idea of watering hole, which, you know, Thornburg, famous essay, um, Cam Parsons and Cyberspace, he explains, and, and I have written um, about this in, in one of my articles that I uh, put on, um, that I sent to faculty for because they published it. So campfires, and uh, this is a fantastic um, essay, and there's this whole idea that he talks about, Thornburg talks about, which is about um, the watering hole. So, and, and, and I always try to create that watering hole um, in my online classes, a little bit in my hybrid classes too. So, and then I found this other article from New York Times, um, Laura Papano says, for Gen Z, life does not happen if it is not recorded on social media. That is where students go to complain, empathize, poke fun, debate, procrastinate, give and seek support, or get a laugh and belong. Which was stunning to me. Life does not happen if it is not on social. That was just so stunning to me. I just, I cannot even now get that out of my mind. Like, so life, life, what I look at life very differently, is equated with social media. My goodness, the importance of it in the student's mind is just incredible. So if, if, if an annotation exercise, and, and I talk about that in the next slide, actually, so let, let's go there. So essentially what Thornburg talks about is uh, that here is this watering hole. This is like a, uh, a shared learning space, uh, which has a goal and peers kind of learn and teach each other. So everybody is a teacher, everybody is a student in that space. Okay. So now the question is, can we leverage this? We are social beings. So, and then not only are we social beings, folks are getting are, are getting defined in the social media space. 
right? So there's just so much of powerful stuff happening over there. The idea is, can we take this inclination that, that folks have for, and then create a similar space for formative learning um, with, sets, with uh, pardon me, social annotation exercises. Rather than use the word assignment, I often use the word activity. We just, I think it was yesterday or last week, one of my students said, when I explained to this, them, like, this is how we're going to work with hypothesis today, then the student says, oh, so this is not an assignment. You are right. This is not an assignment. As you know it, this is not an essay. This is an activity. It's an exercise. Think of it as a place where you would go to to share your ideas with your friends. That's all. It's very informal is kind of what I explained to him. So the prompt could first get students to understand what we are seeking. Are we seeking with this, with this exercise? Are we seeking to generate new ideas? Are we seeking to just get to know each other here's ideas better maybe? Are we seeking to prepare for a future collaboration on a project? So prompts for the exercise will depend on that goal that we have. Some examples would be peer-to-peer uh, -peer Q and A on a text. This is something that we also do in class, right? Many of us do in class. Um, for example, you know the Socratic um, questioning kind of thing. Every post must have a question. Every reply must have a direct answer to that question and a question in return. An example: Student John posts and asks a question. Student Adam replies. John and asks him a question and then student John replies. So three things. This is another way where we can probably, you know, see if they, that, that inclination to be with, with, with their peers, you know, can be exercised for learning, can be used for learning. Student initiated group community based projects on an annotated text. So I usually in my class, I don't call it usually a group, I call it a community and we set communities up in the classroom. So um, for example, our project idea must um, emerge from these annotations, which you will discuss in your Canvas community. So that's why we are, we are doing this, because we are hoping an idea, you're going, you're going to create this idea, a new idea is going to emerge from this text. Students could also choose words from the group's dialogue and create a word map. Okay, so, you know, she said this, he said this, he said this. Okay, so let's create a word map from this. And then that could be used for discussing. Okay, so now what kind of project is this kind of pointing to? All right, maybe we can talk about this. Maybe we can create a project with this, with this idea, with this idea. That's another way. Another way um, that I also use is, um, if the text to be annotated deals with real world problems, then all the better for brainstorming solutions to apply to a bigger project. So those are some of the things that I use um, social annotations for. So annotation, what I'm trying to say here is that annotation exercises need not be an end in themselves. They could be a stepping stone for higher or deeper knowledge. Okay. <laughs> So we hear all the time, students cannot look away. They cannot look away from their phones. They cannot look away from their laptops, wherever they are, it's all about this. Okay, fine. That is the world we are in. Let's, can we use that? Let's see if we can use that. Let's experiment with it. So whether it is information or entertainment or habit or social validation that they're seeking or accessibility or peer influence or fear of missing out, addiction, et cetera. The idea with social annotation exercises is to turn those weaknesses into a positive experience. That's the question. Can we turn that around? Okay, so what, what, what are some of the things that we can do that I've been experimenting with? So students choose current events to annotate. For example, one group came up with the topic of the Baltimore Bridge accident that had just occurred the previous day. And I was surprised, like, oh, you read it already? Okay, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to talk about that current event on your um, annotation exercise. Cool, very good. Um, collective annotation in real time in the classroom. This works so, I mean, this work has worked so far really well. What happens is, um, in the classroom, so of course, I, we have laptops to provide them. Sometimes they bring their own laptops, etc. So I give them this exercise. So first, you go ahead and, you know, you're going to annotate this for this purpose. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do that. 
And it's amazing. And after they finish that, finish all the posting, give them 20 minutes, finish all the posting. And then we actually, now we're going to have that talk. Um, and they are just, they were just so animated. They, there were lots more folks talking. Even the shy ones were like, yes, I would like to say so. they were all talking, they were typing, they were engaged. So engaged where? On that topic that we were discussing. All right. Some learning was happening over there. Cool. It worked very well. And then annotation to research. So of course, in, 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 the, in the class that I'm teaching, students have to do some research. So can we use the annotation to help out with their research? So one exercise is students annotate a given text and groups research. So groups, communities, they research on that topic or theme of that text. They share what they found. Each group decides on one researched essay to annotate and present. So they kind of figure out, okay, from here we have found all, the three of us found three fantastic research, peer research papers. And we have talked about it. And now we have decided this is the one that will be perfect for us. We are going to talk about this. We are going to annotate it. We are going to present it. And the power to choose the text when they have the power. So I, I lead them in, but they have the power to choose the text. And that power can definitely help with focus. Okay, another topic. Um, another another way would be one topic, many perspectives, right? So three annotation exercises on three different texts, which is how I would lead them. And then I give them a summative assignment to reflect on, to comment on, on the various perspectives and add an original argument in response. So there you go. So that is another way that I use checking information and credibility. This is a, this can be an a powerful one. Students could annotate social media posts to identify misinformation. Bring that in. It's all there, right? So let's bring that in. So now how do we detect what is true, what is not true, what is misinformation, what is real information, what is fake, what is, how do we how do we detect that? Everything looks great, right? Everything looks like, especially if it's AI generated or something. Oh, so how? So that's kind of uh, we start, start working on that, researching that. There could be a summative assignment where students critically evaluate the social media post that some thought was misinformation where other, others didn't. So bring that debate in. Like, why would you think that this is an original post and it's a real post? Why would some of us think that this is misinformation? So let's hear about that. Let's debate on that. That's another way. Uh, that can be helpful. Of course, you know, um, um, hypothesis allows for, and more and more social media tools are coming up and, and they all are extremely smart and wonderful and helpful. And they allow for annotating videos and images, which is very thrilling to me. I use um, definitely, you know, plonk in YouTube videos or um, uh, TED Talks that are in YouTube and bring that in. Um, and of course, annotating model papers, they um, there's some great amount of focus there because there's this model paper that's been supplied to you and now you have your own um, uh, writing assignment to do. Okay, so in general, what am I talking about? Um, right on time, I think. Um, I'll take a minute more. So we're talking about focusing on and understanding one's own self. So we always forget the self, our self-intelligence. We forget our own thoughts when we are projecting and looking at things superficially. Let's remember, be aware, everything is coming through this. So how responsible do you want to be? How good do you want to be? Um, whether, whether you want to project an image or not, whether you want to project a good image or not, that is secondary. How good do you first want to be within yourself? Then move out. Um, move out with that thought, S specifying what are we seeking? What are we seeking here? What are we doing? Uh, emphasis on creating anecdotes. Yeah, tell a story, tell a story, tell an anecdote, share an anecdote. And especially if it is something that we teach others, fabulous. Combining annotation exercises with reflective assignments. The watering hole environment, right? informal. Annotation exercises as stepping stones to higher knowledge and creativity. Entangled with social media, let us 
see if we can use it for our own betterment and learning. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. That's great, Nita. So it sounds like you're combating distractions of social media by creating your own social media through social annotations over your course of materials. That's incredible. Thank you. We Is do. it okay if I stop share so I can yeah, maybe? Absolutely. Okay. So maybe I, yeah. I know we have a lot of attendees here in this session, but please um, raise your hand if you want to join in or chime in on some distractions you're seeing in the classroom, how you combat them. Um, feel free to share any questions in the Q&A. It looks like we have one question. Um, so I know we hear from faculty sometimes that in teachers that students tend to not act if annotations aren't graded. Uh, do you grade your annotations? Oh, yes. Or yes, how yes, do you yes. Yeah. yes, everything is graded. In Canvas, the um you can you can it is so beautifully integrated inside of Canvas that I can create an assignment in Canvas and um it, it's Canvas and Canvas uses word to only two words, assignments and discussions, right? So it's okay, it's fine. I always explain to students that think of this as an exercise and an activity. Canvas calls this an assignment, so I'll set it up as an assignment. It is definitely graded, um, definitely graded. I'm going to look through everything, and and um, uh, and and that's kind of how I guide them. The other thing you could also, I sometimes have experimented with in the past is you can bring that in into any page, into any discussion, and then say, okay, do this as a separate page, do that, but you're going to discuss it on the discussion board. So without doing that, you cannot do the discussion board, right? So that's another way. You can integrate it with, with Canvas in with a very direct, solid, good integration that goes straight into your gradebook. Or if you want to get creative, you can do it sort of like in a slightly different way also. What kind of percentage of grading do you typically assign annotations to? Good question. 10% of the overall. I weight everything. 90% is, is summative. 10% is formative. So we could say this would be 10%. Yeah. Great. Also, as you were presenting, you know, I was thinking about the watering hole in Gen Z and what has the students' feedback been about creating kind of this dynamic through social annotations in the classroom? They like it. They like it. In fact, I in just yesterday, I, I asked them, I told them, you know, I'm going to be presenting on this tomorrow. Um, so what do, um, do you, is this, is there's like, do you have like a major, like something that you want to express that I could take back? They were all like, no, we like it. Uh, so they were they were okay with it. Yeah, they were fine with it. And then um, it, it's really, it's essentially a tool. It's essentially a tool. And, and I think teachers love creativity and you can take it and mold it and create it to, to the kind of discipline you are in. Great. Mm -hmm. And do you see them coming into their own? I know we talked about, you know, their own yes. sense of self and how do you see that coming out? Yes. In their annotations? No. So how do I know that this is helping them? And, and the very first time I used hypothesis and I began to play with it and experiment with it. And that's kind of uh, what it was reflected. What they did was reflected in their summative assignments, in their essays. And it is all set up in such a way that if they don't pay attention to A, they will not be able to produce B. <laughs> so, right, so it's scaffolded. So um, um, uh, I noticed, like, suppose I gave them um, for a hypothesis um, exercise, suppose I said early on in the semester, okay, so your first essay will have the choices of four essays. So, and now you have, you have um, uh, let us, um, you know, do annotation on one of the four essays, right? So that, that doesn't mean you cannot choose the other three. You're welcome to reply, but let us first you know, play with this particular essay. And then I noticed that most of the essays in the class were written on that essay on which they um, uh, annotated collectively. So, yeah, so if there were, if I, if they wrote about, um, if we studied, um, uh, does Google make a stupid by Nicholas Carr, and they annotated that, then there were three other essays also, uh, maybe on um, technology and, and all of that. But the out of um, 50 essays, I would definitely receive 25, 30, 35 essays on the one they have annotated because they know that now. They know that essay. 
That's why they don't feel like, okay, I have to read something entirely new. Oh my God, I don't have time. I'm so scared. None of that. None of that drama is going to happen. You have done it already. You've discussed with others. You have your teacher has seen you discuss with others. Let's go. Let's just go simply focus on that writing. Yeah. Right. And I know we have a few more minutes. So if there's any more questions for Nita, please feel free to submit them. But I also did have a question. I know before we started the webinar, we were talking about the challenges of hybrid and attendance. And um, can do you want to just share some of your thoughts and maybe how annotation has impacted hybrid courses? Yes, absolutely. So um, hybrid classes, like we all know, you know, it's notorious where students um, don't want to attend because everything is online. So, so they do that, right? So I do two things. Um, one is, um, okay, so we're going to, one thing to have them come in, and, and I was just telling her that, um, you know, out of 27 students, usually 23, 24 are there in every class right, throughout the semester. And, and I, I applaud them for it. I mean, like, whoa, amazing. You know, I send them notes, like before they attend, I send them notes after they attend. It's like, you guys did such a fantastic job today. Way to go. And then um, things like that, like just to keep them motivated, to keep them feeling like, hey, my teacher is right there with me. She's holding my hand. The, uh, that social annotation in the classroom just is fantastic. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm going to teach that to all my colleagues. <laughs> they also try it in the classroom, in the hybrid classes. That's just kind of low on attendance. Um, give them that essay, have them discuss it and, and post it and everything. And then let's talk about it. Let's open it up. All the communities, let's talk about this. They suddenly start saying things. You know, they're not only saying it. Even. So that works very well. And it is, they know that their teacher is going to do something like that in class, in the class. Either she will open up a hypothesis or she will do some sort of uh, discussion board or she will do something, uh, uh, some sort of blogging that they have to do, which carries some amount of points, which is part of the 10% overall grade. So they'll usually, um, you know, um, um, even send me a message like, um, I do not want to miss a, uh, this class, but I have to take my aunt to uh, what shall I do? And and so they say th those things. So, so you, I, I know that it's important to them now. So coming to class becomes important because of the activity they engage in, not because the teacher is good. Nothing to do with the teacher. It's about them. It's about them. I Sounds like they're also coming prepared too. So even, you know, it's great you have 23 students, but it sounds like there's also engaging dialogue and conversation that's happening, which, you know, is everything we want as educators. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I know we're at time. Um, Nita, this was so inspiring and insightful. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Um, if anyone would like to find Nita, she's in our speaker section on the top red navigation bar in the lobby. If you have any other questions for her, uh, you can find her and message her there. Uh, but Nita, thank you so much for taking the time. This was great. Really appreciate it. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, enjoy the rest of Annotated.